views on what's happening in the ground on America, specifically in the medical sector. I would just ask if we maybe just take a second while other people are still logging on at the moment, while you can just maybe f familiarize yourself with the disclaimer happening at the moment. So let's wait 60 seconds, 90 seconds while everybody is logging on, and then we will continue from there. Thank you. Let's move swiftly on. Thank you very much. I think um, let's just uh, give a broad outline on what we will be giving you guys today. Um, we're going to touch shortly on what where who wealth migrate is, what have we been involved with for the last time, and then we're going to share some more insights on the current investment opportunities we have available. I think before we start, I would just like to introduce my esteemed colleague, Willy Ulofs. <coughs> He's been in wealth migrate for the last two years. He's more on the deal side <coughs> and an analyst, and he's got essential um, experience regarding the investment banking industry. He's been in the UK for about 10 years with one of the biggest investment banks. And just a warm welcome to William. And thank you for making the time to chat with us today. Yes, no, thank you, JP. It's, uh, it's great to be here again. Uh, looking forward to share our new uh, product that we've uh, launched a week or two ago. Uh, you probably, if you are following us, you would have seen the coming soon page of Medical 7. It is here now, and uh, we're looking forward to sharing you all the information uh, and uh, yeah, it's great to be here. Thank you very much, Willie. So today we will be having a quick discussion and a look on what's happening in the medical real estate sector at the moment. At Wealth Migrate, it's been one of our core sectors we've been focusing on. It's been really good for us over the last three and a half years, Willie. And I think it's just important maybe for the new people to give us some insights on why we've been following this and why this has been doing so well for us. I think for people who have been logging on for the first time, just to give you a broad overview of who Wealth Migrate is, we, we bring transparency and independent insights and accessibility to the global real estate investment marketplace through a listed environment. And one thing that for me is very excited is I think it's a big differentiator is the listed environment that we bring to the table, making us basically a, a market leader at the moment. Regarding our systems that we use, we, um, we use our global investment due diligence system is also known as the GIDS. And this actually is to ensure consistency in the safety, wealth preservation, and the sustainability of our deals on the platform. Over the last three years, we've concluded about just six commercial real estate investment projects, which has exceeded just recently over $100 million. I think that's a great feat to be bragging about specifically in three and a half years from a, from a South African company going to a global market. I think that's something that we all at Wealth Migrate is very proud of. Typically, where our normal projects range from a um, investment regarding a, we've got growth opportunities and also income prop properties at the moment. The, the growth investments typically range from 18 to 24 months, and that's where the investor actually, he does start partake in the, the development side of the the value chain of the real estate investments, it's a lot more shorter, can I say, time frame where they actually receive quite a higher returns because they are in, involved in the integrated deal of the investment. Typically, we also focus a lot on income investments. This is where we buy existing properties that already got contractual income at the moment. And our core focus at the end of the day is income. Given this uncertainties in various markets, income is one of our highest priorities. Our income and our Investment returns actually deliver from seven to nine percent per annum, which we currently are able to, to to pay out dividendly to our investors. Before we move on today, I think uh, just get a broad background on who is attending, where are you from, tell us what country are you from, what city are you logging in from. We would love to know if you have invested or ever thought about investing in medical real estate, and whether some of you actually have some offshore real estate investments. Whether it's with Wealth Migrate or other parties, we would just do to go lovely to get some feedback on where you're coming from. Also, what of our investments actually interest you and what we have done, what sectors are you looking at, and have you previously invested with us? If you kindly would just give to give us some information on where you're coming. 
I would swiftly, I think, just like to, to ask Billy to, to get more information on what we're doing regarding the new opportunities. So over to you, Billy. Yes, great. Uh, like I said, I mean, we're looking at uh, another property from uh, SG Property Services, our partner uh, that is in Atlanta. Um, we've uh, had more than, um, well, more than, we've got four properties already with them in the Atlanta area. So uh, this is their first branching out to Texas. Um, and uh, we'll, we'll see now why um, we, and what do we consider. So when, we, when we're talking about the global, um, uh, what's the glo global investments uh, due diligence system, the GIT system, it means that we, we, we consider a couple of things. It's, it's not just these things that we are listing here, but it's a, it's a holistic approach to different kind of things that is important for us. Uh, we've got a part of the investment committee that sits on a, on, a, on a regular basis looking at new opportunities that we can, we can offer potential investors. So what, what, are we, what are we focusing on? We're looking at specific sector preferences, location, population growth, and specifically, and which, which is for us um, and for the investor, usually the biggest, biggest factor is the financials. Is this property investment really going to make some money? Is it, is, it, is it worth investing? And what is this risk uh, involved in uh, um, this opportunity? What we always try to look for is a value play in any transaction. And then last thing that, uh, that's very important that we partner uh, with a sponsor with an excellent track record. So what sectors do we really focus on? We normally look in, in uh, uh, those who are follow us and those that are new. We like the medical real estate sector. We've uh, also got a deal um, that's uh, multifamily, uh, also in Texas, uh, that, uh, that, that we've uh, launched at the end of last year. Uh, and the other sectors uh, we are exploring at this stage, we, um, we like uh, America, Australia, as well as the UK, and soon we're going to launch in South Africa as well, so uh, look and visit uh, the website regularly. So why medical real estate? Uh, rated the most attractive specialist investment sector at, um, from the DLP Piper in 2016, actually number one in 2015 as well, and I think in 2014 as well. So uh, all of the investors, that's what the DL, DLA paper is for, is it's sort of a, a market um, uh, company that, that gets views from different parts and uh, countries uh, with regards to every uh, specializing sectors, you know, getting a feedback. So it's a, it's a, it's a well-known um, uh, read that you, you need to take and uh, look at and that we consider as, as, as worth uh, investigating. The other reasons is the demand for medical office space specifically um, is still strong. Reason being for it is that it's the aging care and um, there's uh, the population growth. So there's always going to be people uh, having healthcare issues and that's why medical office space is, is, is something that will uh, continue being attractive. Doctors are, are generally good tenants. The reason for it is they, they usually sign long-term leases because they, they, they are um, patient geographic is important for them. The, the patients know the doctor is close by and that's probably, what we, well, not probably, what some people, uh, is, that's an important thing to know. The high tenant installation costs for, for, for a medical practice, uh, the setup costs for uh, not just a medical practice but hospitals. Uh, and the advanced technology that's usually um, involved with um, healthcare, you know, most of the, 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 the uh, systems that they uh, use, make use of, uh, is so sensitive that you don't, uh, don't want to move it that regularly. Uh, what also is, is also important to note is that uh, from in some instances there's a certificate of needs that is um, uh, attached to a particular building. So once the, the, the doctor is in, um, they're not, not really um, going to move that easily. So what we've also seen in 2016 is that the vacancy for medical office spaces are at a nine-year low. And it's because of the, this driven demand, uh, demand that uh, has been shifting for um, medical space has been shifting to a more patient-centric care delivery model, which is a bit off from the, your big hospitals. But at the same time, it's, it's mainly due to the fact that the um, on-campus medical office spaces 
has also risen um, because there's um, hospital programs that they expand and uh, just 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 to ensure to bring more specialized um, specialized units closer to to um, to the hospital to make it easier and accessible for the the medical doctors and specialists the on site. So what this demand also really causes is, a, is the, the compression on the cap rate, capitalization rate. What we've, um, uh, some of the webinars uh, that we've uh, addressed this is that is you want to see a capitalization rate uh, lower, not really higher. And what we've, we currently see is that the, the cap rates are still compressing at this stage. It's around anything between 5 to 8% cap rates is a, is, a, is a good cap rate at this point in time. Um, what, is, what does it mean? Uh, effectively, uh, consistent income yields and capital growth opportunities are, are really what medical real estate offers the investor. So when we look at um, the location, JP, you, uh, you, um, you know Texas well, and tell us a bit more about it. Yeah, thanks, Billy, for that insight on the, the medical sector. I think, I mean, we've, we've extensively dealt on why we are Texas and we're so pro in Texas, but just for the people who are logging on for the first time, the thing that's very important for us, it's an at-will state. And what that actually means is in the labor market, um, employers can actually dismiss without any just cause, meaning that if the guy does not perform, they're not going to stick up with him. They're going to send him packing, and from a business perspective, that's always a good start sign regarding productivity at the end of the day. Because we are in the medical the medical sector, we are we find it really advantageous because in the state that the medical malpractice um, lawsuits are capped to a certain extent. I don't know, Billy, if you know the exact figure, but what this actually means is should a doctor for some reason actually mess up, the patients actually cannot take him to the cleaner. So his business is kind of secured in the sense of uh, the legislation that is in place for that, and that's a big advantage for us. One of the, the, the biggest can I say facts or everybody knows regarding on the ground why everybody is moving to Texas is that there's no state tax income or income tax payable at the moment also no goods in transit tax. What this effectively means is there's a lot of the big Forbes 500 companies actually moving there and shifting their headquarters to, to the state because that's good for business at the end of the day. They save a lot on tax. What that effectively means is there's great population growth in these areas and we also highly invested in, in areas that shows great population growth. Um, if you have a look at the, the economic output of Texas on an annual basis, it actually exceeds over $1 trillion. Um, that is actually quite massive. I think if you just consider in South Africa, that's more than three and a half times that the South African output um, regarding an economic standpoint, and I think it's very substantial, um, can I say, progress point in, in the market. So we are very optimistic on the, the future for the, the business in, in Texas and the, the economic positioning it has regarding its current outputs. Uh, another very big thing is that it's currently the largest exporter of goods in the USA and it grosses more than $260 billion a year in trade. Now that's very interesting because in this one trade or sector of trade, it is actually a greater output than what South Africa puts out at the moment. So. It's everything in Texas is just big and massive, and for business, we believe that's a good fundamental um, thing to have on your side. If you look at a population regarding it to the states, uh, Texas currently is the second largest population in the U.S., second to only California, who's got about 38 million residents at the moment, and Texas currently is ticking just above 28 million uh, residents in, in at the moment. 80% of those um, populations actually are resided in the Texaplex and so for those of you who don't know what the Texaplex or the the, the 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 buzz around it is, it's actually a triangle formed in the heart of the state which which is actually made up of Dallas, Fort Worth, San Antonio, Houston and Austin and this this is actually recognized as a, a hot spot of innovation, a, a hub for growth and opportunity and that's also a major reason, the reason for the influx of business into the state at the moment. Some of the top 10 most popular cities in the U.S. also includes three of these uh, Texaplex cities and that's why we try to operate in majority of these markets. If you look at the forecasted growth for the population at Texas at the moment, they are forecasting to add about 12 million more residents in the next, um, well, up until 2013. So, as we said, a big fundamental for us is always to invest where there's uh, population growth which directly relates to demand. 
um, moving over maybe to, to Dallas to specifically, Billy, do you mind touching on why we're looking at Dallas at the moment? Yeah, it's just um, yeah, just uh, for, for intersect and just adding on to uh, what you were saying about Texas, the most Fortune 500 headquarters is there, like you mentioned. Uh, it's, the, it's, it's the most um, in, in all states, and the, the population growth up until this point has been 9% since 2010. So we will look at Dallas. Um, uh, DFW is for Dallas Fort Worth. It's, uh, it's basic, uh, Dallas has grown to such an extent that it, it, it actually uh, forms part of uh, Fort Worth as well. So it actually engulfed most of the towns in between, uh, which this property, um, the Mac, uh, MacArthur Medical Plaza, falls within within this, this area. If you look at the, the photo there, uh, and the picture, you'll find that uh, it's, it's close to the, the airport, and the airport lies in between uh, Fort Worth and Dallas. So interesting facts, fun facts, if you want to call it that. The first convenience store, the 7-Eleven, started in Dallas and is still headquartered there today. Um, the integrated uh, circuit computer chip was invented in 1958. The microchip, for, for those that uh, has got some financial calculators, you would have known uh, about the Texas Instruments. They also big in the computer space. That they actually are, they, they come from Dallas. It's the ninth largest city in the U.S. with around 6.9 million people living there. It's the fastest growing metro for the past decade. Um, by 2040, 10.6 million people will be living in Dallas Fort Worth. That's going to be about a growth of 47 percent. DFW uh, Airport is the fourth busiest in the world. To give you a number, 174,000 people visit or travel through uh, Dallas Fort Worth Airport on a daily basis. It is a well diversified economy and it's not relying on one sector. That's a very important thing for us because we, we, we know uh, how difficult it is, uh, specifically when the oil price. Uh, collapsed, uh, it had a, a detrimental effect on a lot of businesses, and that was one of the concerns, uh, specifically in Houston, but uh, if you uh, um, uh, visited uh, us with one of the webinars, uh, we have actually uh, shared, you, uh, shared you that they've actually, because of their reliance on oil, actually diversified to such an extent that it's not been that, that big of a deal. So what is happening in, in, in Dallas area, transport, uh, trade and transport is about 20% 20, 20 of that, uh, the economy there, which is $77 billion a year. Uh, professional and business sector makes up another 18%. The public uh, administration, which includes your education, is a, another 13 Healthcare or, or health services is, a hundred, is, a, is another 10%. So very interesting, the, the economy is also um, um, forecasted to grow to 4.25%. I think uh, um, JP mentioned to me it's a, it's it's one percent actually above the national average. Yeah, that's correct. So when we um, uh, this is an interesting picture that I that I uh, picked up from my research in uh, trying to establish why Dallas. As you can see, there's a lot of people uh, moving into Dallas, and one of the main reasons, as as um, JP touched on earlier, is the fact that. It is, it is a state that actually wants businesses to grow. It's the number one most business friendly city. Um, cost of doing business there is 7% less than the national average. Migration um, uh, with the connected, uh, sorry, let me just, uh, uh, yeah, the unemployment rate is 3.7% to give you an idea. It's the best place to start up uh, for, for startups and the top three, uh, three um, sector for job growth. It's the seven largest high-tech uh, workers is concentrated in, in Dallas. So people want to live, it, live here and that, that's positive for, for what we want to see in the population growth and this is, a, this is feeding it and that's why we like Dallas. So now the financials. What is important is, is to know that uh, this is a medical building. The deal size is going to be just, just over 10 million. Project equity that's available to invest in is going to be 3.5, 2.3 million. The duration for this project is going to be five years. The internal rate of return uh, over this five year, uh, before tax, after costs and everything will be 13.48%. The average uh, forecasted quarterly dividend 
uh, projected over here is going to be on average 8%. This is, this is for me still unbelievable uh, to be able to invest in, uh, uh, and uh, have an opportunity uh, to invest in property in America by just as little as $1,000. The closing date is the 20th of March, so there's uh, uh, roughly uh, almost 30 days left. Um, so um, we, hope, uh, we hope you can uh, uh, take this information to heart. So on our GIT score, this property actually gave us uh, a 9.6. What, what does the property entail? Uh, what is important uh, is that it's a 67% uh, of a condominium, uh, which means that we are buying into uh, the majority shareholding of uh, the condominium, which means that uh, no um, uh, adverse effects can be done if, if some of the other owners at, the, at this point doesn't agree with changes that we want to implement, we are able to implement that. So the blue sections you'll find is the is the five buildings, um, or well, four buildings that we, we, we're purchasing with, with um, a number of suits in them. So, so what, is it, what does it mean? Why are we getting this, this, this property? It's actually um, uh, the, the, the owners, uh, there's, there's only three owners that uh, own the whole condominium. They have actually uh, um, are not friendly with each other anymore, so that actually played into our hands, so we, we are getting this um, at a good price. Uh, it's at an 8.2 cap rate. As I mentioned earlier, the current market cap rates is hovering uh, around 6%. The building is 100% tenanted, which doesn't allow us a lot of room, uh, wiggle room to, to have a proper value play as we, we like. And uh, if you uh, visited us, um, maybe um, and have seen, uh, uh, we, we would like to invest in some buildings that has a bit of a vacancy, which we can lease up, do a bit of small improvements. This building doesn't really have that. But the opportunity lies here in that we've already started the negotiations with, with the other owners to see if we cannot uh, buy into the, the, the other condominiums. So that's, uh, that, that's something that we, we're looking at. It's not necessary that it, it actually adversely affects this, uh, this, this investment. It still makes it a great opportunity. So if we look at them, um, let me just uh, page through here. Just computers a bit slow. So what we've, uh, what we, um, what is great is, is also for us is the, the, the fact that 65% of the total um, the leases expires in 12 years time. Um, so you'll see that in the cash flow you'll you'll find that in year um, three and four, well four and five there's a bit of a bit, a bit of a uh, drop in, in in your cash on cash return. The right main reason there, there is that we, we account for that the 3,200 square footage that could possibly um, go vacant. This is just an estimation, so we, we would rather want to be conservative. It's not necessarily the case. We, uh, we do know that they, they have an option to, to further extend their leases, so it's not necessarily um, the case that we should find that the, those vacancies will occur. But we just want to make sure that we, we uh, forecast as accurately as possible and not over promise and under deliver. So as you can see, it's a, it's a beautiful building. Um, it's actually um, our first building that's completely concrete. It was built in 1968, and that's why it's still looking great. We, uh, we know from experience that most of the other buildings are not really made of concrete. It's more wood structured and steel structured buildings. But this is what, what, uh, what attracted us to this building, is that it can stand the test of time um, what is also uh, great about it, it was newly renovated um, with the roof and the parking area. So it actually, it's a, it's, it's, it's a, it's a, it's a good looking building, it's got good open spaces and even maybe opportunities if we do get the, the rest of the, the condominium to, maybe there's an opportunity to further grow it. So what we've also done is we've um, looked at uh, uh, fixing the rates uh, where um, you'll find that it's, a, it's around 5.25% with interest only, which means that uh, we, you'll see that the first year's interest is going to be around 8%, 8.6%, I think, if I, my mind serves me correctly, in 8.1 uh, cash on cash, 7.7, 7.4, and 8, and that's why we're getting an 8, 8, 
average. That's where you, you, you'll see um, the difference, as I mentioned earlier, year three and four. The main reason it's sort of progressively decreasing is firstly we've got an 18-month interest-only loan, um, and that's why it's the, the principal payment starts kicking in into year two, and, uh, and then full principal payments in year three. Year four and five is obviously just the forecasting for the uh, possible um, uh, vacancies that could take place. What, are, what numbers do I still need to, to elaborate on? Uh, we've got the, the cap rate, it's 8.2%. We're forecasting uh, and, and should see that we uh, will be able to exit at a cap rate of 6.5%. So what risks are there? I don't know, JP, if you want to start us off on the uh, old good old Trump. Yeah, I think, um, just not here from South Africa, but I think globally there's a lot of uncertainty what his uh, royal orangeness is actually going to do in his first year of in, in the, the Senate and the, and the seat of Parliament. So I think the three main impacts that we, that not just us at Wealth Migrate, but everybody around the world is actually worrying and what, what we can do to mitigate that. And I think the first thing, a lot of the investors who've been invested in the medical sector are worrying is what is the impact going to be if Trump actually does decide to, to repeal the Affordable Care Act, or also known as the Obama Care Act. Um, from, from our perspective and the research and the listenings and the readings we had on the ground, we think this is going to be a lot more um, difficult to implement, actually. I mean, he, he, he does say that he's going to look to repeal it, but I, it's not actually just going to take it away. He might, he might re replace it with something better at the end of the day. Um, JP, yeah, let me just come in there. Sorry for, for, for budging in, but um, um, I found uh, if, we, if we look at uh, his, uh, the executive orders, uh, as it was widely publicized, he already said uh, in his first week, uh, uh, an executive order that this is going to be repealed and it's, and, and it's, and it's widely publicized. Uh, in the media, they, they've been rolling around numbers of 18 million people that has actually uh, been signed on uh, onto the Obamacare, as it, as it was called, if the Affordable App, uh, Care Act doesn't, uh, if you don't recognize it, it's the Obamacare. Um, I think uh, JP just mentioned it, but if we, if we look at, uh, at, uh, at the U.S., there's 300 and, uh, 324 million people in the U.S. currently, uh, probably a bit more by now, uh, but only 18 million of these people, which is 6% of the nation, have been signed up into the Affordable Act, which was mainly to, to get the people that, that is a, they can't really uh, afford it or have problems uh, um, regarding um, the, the, the medical bills and stuff to make sure that they um, uh, also get into the medical, medical space. What we, what we find is that 84% of the U.S. population actually has some sort of health insurance, which means that uh, there is um, it's still a lot of people that is, is actually covered, 272 mil million people to be exact. 55% uh, of, of the, this um, medical aid uh, and health insurance guys are actually uh, provided for by um, the employers. So what, we, what we've seen now is, is that with the infrastructure spending that that, um, or, um, that Trump uh, is sort of uh, been advocating, building the wall as such, um, means that this will, this, this will actually mean that, um, uh, the, this actually means that more businesses will be able to, uh, more businesses will be able to actually give health insurance to their, their uh, employees. We,
to uh, connection used to be. All right, sorry, sorry about that. Um, uh, technology, uh, we apologize for that. As I was saying, I don't know what, uh, what you've heard, but the infrastructure spinning should see the Affordable Act repeal. Doesn't matter how it comes back. We believe that uh, there's a good chance be, be, be because of adding the more jobs to to um, uh, to the economic system will actually sort of solve that problem on its own. So, yeah. So, so, so one of the other things that uh, or risks that we, we find is that when the, the jobs is more jobs created, it'll mean that there's a possibility that guys will have more money to spend. They will be spending, which means there's a more demand, a bigger demand for. Um, various uh, products which effectively can uh, cause an increase in interest rates. So that's one of the things that, that, that's really important for us that we need to look at because it's, this is a five-year investment opportunity. It means that we need to carefully look at um, what, what, how can we mitigate this, this specific risk. So we foresee that the, the inflation will be going up. The Fed has already indicated that they are planning on raising the interest rates. Um, and um, this means that uh, we uh, had to mitigate the, the risk by lowering the LTV. You will see uh, some of our earlier transactions at a 75% loan to value. We've dropped that now to closer to 60%. In this particular deal, it's 64%, which means that our debt cover ratio actually is just above two. The banks usually require you to have a 1.25 um, uh, number of uh, more uh, turnover and net operating income in relation to to your debt cover or your sorry your interest payment that you need to pay. That's why what, what we've seen happening in 2008, the banks uh, most of the, the the valuations went lower just because of because of that. And we want to make sure that we really uh, mitigate our risk because this that's potentially our biggest risk because that's going to influence your numbers and uh, what you're getting in your pocket. Not right. Uh, I think I covered that. Ooh, went too far. Oh yeah, we cut the cover. That's fine. Apologies, uh, just a finger slip there. So we looked at the risks, and then what is very important for us is um, partnering up with uh, a proper and experienced property partner. For those of you that are new, SU Property Services. Uh, they've got an excellent track record. Uh, for sourcing quality medical real estate. They've got good relations, uh, specifically in the Georgia area and in the Texas area and in the real estate area where they, they actually find deals that's off the market, you know, and that's, that's really uh, assisting us to get, get these uh, great uh, opportunities to invest in. Uh, they, their services uh, not only includes in finding these opportunities, but also in uh, making sure that the property is run uh, well over the course of time, and uh, that uh, they, they get some um, good tenants in place for us. And uh, if there's not a great tenant, as, as um, JP mentioned earlier, they can just uh, um, give them a notice and uh, get them out of there. So what is, uh, what is great for us about SG Property Services as well is the fact that they've already, we've, this is going to be our fifth building uh, property that we are, are partnering up with them. So, uh, and the previous projects, they've actually, um, on the average, uh, forecasted um, of around 8% plus. Uh, we were able to achieve uh, all the forecasted figures for this, uh, the, the four previous buildings that we've uh, invested and partnered up with them. So, in summary. Yeah, thank you very, very much. Um, Thanks for your insights and uh, hopefully that did shed some light on why we believe medical is a good sector to be involved in. Um, we did touch on basically medical real estate is underpinned by the, the long-term tenant nature of the doctors and also um, also regarding all of the restrictions from making it not ac as accessible to move out, so that's very good for us. We did touch on why Dallas is such a good expl um, the exploding state at the moment. There's a large influx of ju not just people but business. And it's a business-friendly environment, effectively, and that's where we try to associate ourselves with, where markets are actually easy to operate in and, and not struggle to grow business within the, within the state. So we've touched on the population growth and why it's so positive, and one of, as I said, wealth migrates 
motto is, is always to invest in markets that has a continuous population growth because that directly relates into demand for property. We've spoken about the overview of our typical our typical returns on um, some of our projects and currently we can expect to receive about a 13.46 internal rate of return over a five year period for this specific project. Billy did address some of the risk that is not just with us but everybody else around the world and actually how we've taken some measures to mitigate those risks. Um, mainly just one of them that Billy really talked about is fixing the rate and actually lowering your exposure to debt over the, over the period. Um, as we said on this specific deal, there's not a great value play at the moment. It's more of actually acquiring a, a fully leased property, gaining a solid stream of income. It's a solid asset class with the potential um, that Billy said that we might be able to acquire the other 33% of the property. So there might be a value play in the future. But if we don't manage to pull that off, it's still a solid income stream that you're buying into to deliver a hard currency income into your wallet. We did discuss also why we've uh, been involved with SG Properties. They've just had, an, as you said, a magnificent record and we've been actually very, very fortunate to be able to partner with these guys because I think it's kind of naive trying to, to enter into markets where you are not actively involved in because you are going to make mistakes. So we believe in establishing relationships with people who know what they are doing on the ground and with their finger on the pulse. Um, with that being said, I think we'll move over to any key questions that might be um, from, from our audience today. If you have any burning questions, you are welcome to chat them, uh, put them in the chat box and Billy and I will answer them as best as we can. So we'll just uh, we'll give it about five minutes and see if there's any burning questions that do come up at the moment. We've uh, seen uh, some some questions coming in. Uh, one of the questions is uh, any concerns regarding currency exchange values from overseas buyers? Um, well, I think what, what, what we're trying to uh, establish is the fact that um, let me just uh, what is it? let me just open this up so that I can see. Uh, questions more clearly coming in. Uh, let me just uh, make sure I understand this question uh, correctly. I just learned it. All right, so I'm going to start with this this, this first question with regards to uh, transactioning uh, with the US. Or what uh, what makes uh, this opportunity great to partnering with Wealth Migrate? If you go to our website, visiting our platform, um, you, you should be able, uh, we've simplified the process of transacting so you are not encumbered with uh, any uh, dealings with moving money in and out of uh, the U.S. We, uh, we've uh, specifically structured it in such a way that you are able to, to uh, have it more affordable for, uh, for the investor. And uh, yeah, so um, it's, uh, it's a, it hopefully uh, uh, that makes sense. It's a, it's a difficult question to ask uh, because uh, not all the banks are the same, so hopefully um, we can uh, maybe address that at another point. It's, uh, we, we try to make it as cost effective as possible. I think that's what I just want to mention there. All right, so what happens uh, after the five year term? So, uh, yeah, uh, Lawrence, uh, it, um, the, the, the idea is, is we, we want to, um, uh, we'll probably put the, the, the property in the market. Uh, usually, uh, we um, we give it to a vote and uh, 
uh, if uh, all the investors are happy with uh, with uh, the majority of investors are happy with uh, selling it, uh, the idea is to, to to stick to a five year term. It just makes it easier to to uh, allow you to invest in additional properties and in, uh, in additional investments. So we we should be then uh, just uh, going in, back into the market and putting it up for sale. Yeah, maybe just to clarify, Billy. I mean, just that's uh, totally up to the unanimous vote of the the shareholders within the project. We typically do an evaluation on the final quarter of the period, and we do we do a new market forecast and saying, listen, um, what's the what's the market looking currently, and um, then we put it to a vote, and the investors actually decide whether they want to dispose of the asset or not. Uh, there's another question coming on with. Uh, have you for how long have you fixed the rate, and at what level? What was the rate on the previous medical investments, uh, Sue Style? Very, I mean, you've been involved in the deals. Can you yeah. elaborate? Yeah. So, so the previous deals, uh, um, there's been. Um, it, it was quite um, interesting um, when we did uh, Medical Five. Uh, we um, we had a rate of uh, just over four uh, percent. Let me just uh, look through my memory. It's four point zero two percent within uh, the two weeks that. Uh, uh, President Donald Trump was elected, uh, the interest rate actually moved by 8%. So the, the rate has been fixed for, for, for the remaining of the term, uh, which is it's five years. Um, and uh, it's, it's actually, it should be close to 5.02 as of today. It differs at closing date, we will fix that rate. And that's why we're forecasting it at 5.25, just to be conservative. But uh, we uh, we are hoping to to close it in the, the next month. We shouldn't see the the rates increasing that much because it's been uh, um, actually moving in a different direction as it was uh, after the election. Uh, the, the rates are actually stabilizing now a bit more. Um, so we we uh, hope to to see it um, just just above five percent uh, once we close it. There's another question coming through here from Alessandro. Is there a minimum amount for US and LLC investors if they want to participate? Um, Billy, are we setting a, a minimum through those channels? No, uh, it is. Uh, you are also able to invest uh, for a thousand dollars. What happens after the five years? We did discuss that. Um, any concerns regarding the currency exchange values? From overseas by Steve Adams. Um, we're not sure. Are you just referring to maybe foreign buyers from maybe somewhere in Europe? Um, I don't know, really if you want to elaborate on the currency risk at the moment. But from my perspective and we, what we've been talking to people at the moment, um, the USA has been seen kind of a, as a safe haven at the moment, given the the volatility over a lot of the currencies uh, globally at the moment. Believe you want to maybe touch a bit more into, if, regarding that? Yeah, I think. Um... What is uh, the currency exchange values risks? There's, 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 that, that is going to be always the case. Um, we, we we don't really get involved with that. Um, if we if we have a look uh, at um, specifically from from a South African point of view, investing into the U.S., uh, if the exchange rate uh, actually uh, depreciate, it's 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 a win for the South Africans. Uh, what we do find and what uh, what my expectation is is that. Uh, um, we'll probably see that the the, the, the dollar um, should should uh, depreciate a bit um, against some of the currencies just because of the fact that it's it's becoming a bit more popular when the, the market's starting to to increase again in investment and uh, um, as 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 Donald Trump has indicated that he, he actually wants to uh, stimulate the economy, which will probably see more foreign investment going into that country, which will then definitely um, have a, 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 a depreciation effect on it because there's a bigger demand for dollars then. But uh, in saying that, it's, it's, it's kind of difficult to forecast that forecast at the moment. Uh, there's still a lot of things and uncertainties at this stage as to what exactly is gonna, gonna happen in the next 100 days. Oh, Gabriel is asking, uh, what is the estimate closing date? We did mention it's going to be roughly around the 20th of March. No, not, no sorry, it's not roughly, it's gonna be the 20th of March. Now, what I meant to say is if the equity is actually taken up before that, that uh, the deal will be closed. So it's all dependent on the rate of equity. So if we manage to raise the funds, the deal will close obviously quicker than that. Yes, agreed. Uh, is there, yeah. We're just paging to see that if we've uh, answered all the questions. 
Uh, Steve, Steve actually coming back is from a UK perspective as the sterling is currently weak. Um, Billy did address that maybe from a, a global perspective. So we, we, we are kind of positive on the outlook at the moment. Maybe in the short run there, there will be a, a little bit of a, a dip. But I think in the long run, USA has always been seen as a safe haven for, for currency to, to hold hard cash. Yeah, I think um, just coming in there, I think yeah, it is a difficult situation um, because the, the the UK can can actually strengthen uh, with the Brexit factors as well now uh, coming into play. Uh, that 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 is definitely uh, going to influence uh, um, the sterling. Um, it's, it's it's difficult at this stage. I think they, uh, if I remember correctly, the the Parliament uh, actually has given. A, the, the strengthened um, Theresa May's hands to uh, to move to to, to exit, um, which actually is not positive for the sterling at the moment. Um, but yeah, it's going to be difficult to say. Uh, I, I I'm a firm believer that the pound will eventually uh, recover, um, which could be uh, having a uh, will cause a bit of an effect on uh, if you're investing from sterling to dollars uh, during the course of the investment. Great, thank you very much, Willie. Um, it seems that we pretty much handled all the questions that's come through up until now. We'll give it one more minute if there's any burning qu questions, and then we'll move swiftly over to the final steps if you are looking to take action. I think the next steps is here for you to log on to wealthmigrate.com, where you can actually sign up and review the actual deals. You'll get, uh, can I say, a, a window, a shop of different opportunities, and just look for. SG Properties Medical 7, if you're looking to invest within this project, you can do the transaction in online. Once you've submitted all your documents to to, to, to actually um, complete your, know your client process, it's quite easy to do that and also to manage your portfolio going forward. So if there's no further questions, I think uh, from my side, that's everything. But is there anything other that you want to touch on? Um, Mark now actually said, sorry, he had an interruption on his side regarding the, the wiring fee. Has that question been answered? Mark, yes, we did touch on it lightly. It's a difficult situation as, I mean, it, it depends from bank to bank. At the moment, we, we're realizing that the transactional fees moving from um, American accounts is quite hefty. But that's why once you are on the platform, it's a lot more cost efficient, seamless. And I think it's maybe a, a fun to take at the moment. To get onto that platform and make transacting in the future quite um, a lot more easy. It's difficult to say because, as Willie mentioned, every bank does differ, and a five percent cost does sound a bit extravagant. But we're not in the position to comment on that at the moment. Pierre van der Berg actually asked us, "Do you see more medical deals to materialize later in this year?" Yes. Uh, um Pierre, uh, we, uh, we've, uh, we've started negotiations with a couple of uh, um, more potential sellers. Uh, we are hoping uh, to uh, do at least one medical um, project um, per quarter. Um, hopefully, if, if the, the, the negotiations goes well, we should be seeing uh, um, a coming soon of the next medical building uh, um, in, the, in the next month or two. So I think that seems to be it from the question side. Um, thank you very much for tuning in today. We hope this has been informative. Um, if there's any burning questions, as you saw there, you are always welcome to contact either me or Jock Roo at jp at wealthmigrate or jock at wealthmigrate.com. We look forward to having you on any of our future investments and getting you on our platform. And until we have a next webinar, enjoy the rest of your day. Thank you very much, and thank you, Billy, for your time and making an effort to, to have a chat and maybe give some more elaboration on the deal. We really appreciate it. Yes, no, thank you. It's always great being here, and uh, it's, a, it's an exciting project, and uh, it's, been a, it's been a long time since we uh, had a, a medical investment opportunity, and, uh, yeah, so we, we're hoping uh, that uh, it will be fruitful for anyone that invests. Thank you. Goodbye. Goodbye.